Well, the doctor is in with new research on the artificial sweetener found in Sweetenlo. It was thought once to be bad for you, but a new study finds it could actually help treat aggressive cancers. Hmm. Joining us now, Dr. Ernest Patty, senior attending physician of emergency medicine at San Barnabas Hospital. It's good to have you on set, Dr. Patty. Thanks for having me, Jenna. Tell us a little bit about saccharin. We well, hear about that not being good for you, but what does this study say? Isn't it ironic that in years ago, saccharin was once considered a, a a compound that could cause cancers. Right. Now this new research is suggesting that it may actually block a specific protein in some type of aggressive cancers, slowing down the growth of these cancers and actually helping to prevent cancer formation. Now, how does that block work? Meaning, is that simply if someone was ingesting sweet and low, that they would have something in their body that would block cancer? No, it, there's a compound in the saccharin that actually blocks this uh, protein called carbonic anhydrase uh, 1X or carbonic anhydrase 9. That carbonic anhydrase is found in potentially aggressive tumors, breast, lung, kidney, pancreas. The really bad stuff. The really bad stuff. Uh, even prostate cancer, some of them have it. And what they found is in the early research that the saccharin can actually disrupt the pH of this carbonic anhydrase, pretty much rendering it, rendering it useless so the cancers then don't grow as fast as they normally do. Because as you pointed out, there have been plenty of times when there's been a lot of bad information coming out about uh, these, these quote-unquote fake sweeteners right. and make you really think about reaching for one, which is sure. why I asked, you know, is this permission for us just to have as much saccharin as we want or what exactly is the message for us today? Well, obviously, it's still too early to go out and start stocking up on right. saccharin because more research is needed. But the exciting thing is what they've discovered is that uh, th this uh, particular uh, carbonic anhydrase or protein is not in normal cells. So the nice thing is if they can stop this uh, from working, then they can have specific uh, targeted therapies, chemotherapies, radiation therapies that would work on the tumor cells and not affect your healthy so cells. So it would look different than getting a packet of uh, fake sugar. Probably look a little it's different. A than different that. form than that. It's interesting because over the last year or two years or so, there's been this big movement and we've certainly done a few segments on, on our yeah. air about sugar and how sugar could cause inflammation in the system and inflammation perhaps is the cause from cancer, which still remains a mystery. What do you think this is telling us about the world of sweetness, whether it's the real sugar or the fake stuff? You know, I, I, I really think what it's telling us is we sometimes have to look outside the box and, and focus on common everyday things that are around us as hopefully helping us cure some of these deadly diseases. You know, there's bad things to sugar, but people have been eating sugar for years and it hasn't affected a large proportion of them. But there's a certain segment of the population that have been affected by sugar and artificial sweeteners. So we really need to focus in on these things and try to look at them with a broader palate, and maybe be able to figure out how they can help and no, how they no can help. No pun on the broader palate, but I did like that. Just really quickly, again, before we leave, not a permission to just load up on the sweet and low. No, I, I wouldn't go out and stock up on sweet and low right now because it'll probably come in a pill form or some other type of, you know, normal form. But it's exciting because it was once, uh, you know, a pariah and now it may actually be a, a tool that we use. It's very interesting. Certainly a headline that caught our attention. Dr. Ernest Patty, great to have you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Jenna.